leaving Castro Jerez about eight o'clock. Sun's coming up behind us. Got all my laundry strapped on the back because it didn't dry last night. Gonna be a good day. Standing now in the shadow of the castle, heading on to the lonesome highway. Beautiful sunrise. Once again, walking through the village to get out of town. I think Castro Jerez is one of my favorite little villages on the Camino. Villages like this are reason to walk the Maceta for me and not to skip it like some people do. Some people catch a bus on the Leon, so. Passing through the square, over to the Camino. Feeling very alive today. Finally out of town, that's the town behind us. About 18 kilometers to go, maybe. Back in La Maceta. I love it out here. I don't know what all the fuss is about. Not sure what that is. I have to look it up. Quick footnote, I did look up Romans 11, 1 through 27, and while I get it, I don't know what it has to do with the Camino. I thought there would be no climbing today. Seeing the shadow you cast while you walk the Camino kind of makes it real. Road behind me is to uh, Alta de, Alta de Modulares, 12% grade. We've come maybe a kilometer, kilometer and a half, so it's about two kilometers up. Sort of a Nietzsche path type thing, but not quite as rocky and nasty. Once there, it's downhill. Uh, the only way to do this is to pick stopping points, walk them and rest. This isn't a very far up, but I picked the curve of this road, said so I'm gonna stop there. You gotta do it in stages. There happens to be a marker for Jose Verino, Valino, not Peregrino. The sign down there is where we stop. This Oi. is our first stage. Oi! Okay. Very steep. There's Castro Hattie's. Took the Camino. All the way up here. I'm glad the sun's behind clouds, but I'm not because I got wet clothes in my backpack that are needing the sun to dry. And I still have this on. <laughs> I don't need this anymore. Climbing up to the peak. 12%, that's all. 12% grade. <sighs> at the next resting point. Some people like to take these hills all at once. I'm not one of them. I learned very quickly back there trying to take a hill all at once almost two weeks ago, but that kills you. I don't know if you can see a little steeple right there. That's Alta Montelares. It's not far, but it's not an easy close. Pausing yet again, it's right up there. It's right up there, but this is a hard climb. The amazing thing about the Camino is my body doesn't feel weak. It gets stronger every day. I love it. All right, keep going. Just a few more feet. I can't believe someone's riding a bike up. It's coming in hot. Here we are. Look, you can see how far we came. I maybe some might be on our side still.
I'll wait and see if a friend of mine who is having a little trouble makes it. Looks like that's him. I think he's going to be okay. Making good time, my friend. Hello. Hello. Hola. And off we go. That was Alto de Mastelares. Now we're at the peak. It's kind of flat on the top and it goes down pretty soon, according to the elevation profile. I'm on the Camino. That's the reality. <laughs> and we go down and all the way over there. Just jamming down the road and singing Mysterious Ways by you 2 I know I'm doing all right because I danced most of the way. <laughs> well, once we got over the mountain, we're back in La Maceta. be alone this is the place to be it and that boys and girls is what you call irony because 17 minutes later whole crowd of pilgrims uh, coming up behind me saludos buen camino buen camino well they caught me I wasted too much time stopping and talking to you folks A little roadside stop there I thought I saw a truck up here. I thought, you know, sometimes I've heard they locals put food trucks out at different spots to help. Turned out it was a garbage truck. I was disappointed. But uh, got a little rest. Now we're moving on. Those are some eerie clouds. It's worth mentioning that it's October now, and October is my favorite month. That group behind me is a, a French tour group. I have a feeling like the bus dropped them off at the base of the mountain back there in the little, well, in the middle of the Mas La Maceda because La Maceda is fairly easy on you physically. You can hear them talking and talking. They're all fresh and happy and excited. They haven't been on this Camino very long. <laughs> We're coming up on an albergue that's in uh, another monastery, I believe. I'm not staying here tonight. I'm not adventurous enough to stay here tonight. So this is Ermita de San Nicolas. It's a hermitage, not a monastery. I thought these people were staying here the night, so I rested and ate something. But now they're all ahead of me. Now I gotta pass that whole crowd. Oh, they're stopping. They were stopping to pose for a photo. Thought I could pass them all. Now they're going again. Now I gotta race them. Next place is less than two kilometers. It says they have groceries and a restaurant, so. Out of the province of Burgos into the province of Palencia. This is a much prettier marker. Far from the matting crowd. What exactly is a matting crowd? I'll have to look that up. Maddening crowd I know about, but I don't know what matting means. I think they're far enough back they haven't caught me. All right, we're heading into a little village called Etero de la Vega. This is the first village that has any sort of services since we left this morning. So it's been a little over 12 kilometers, but it seems like it's taken a lot longer. Well, only about four hours, come to think of it. And yes, 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 I see every indication of civilization. I have about eight kilometers at the pace I'm going. If I go good, if I go well, excuse me, I make about four kilometers an hour, maybe a little more. Oh, 
That is Hetero de la Vega in the distance. We're going the opposite way. I don't know why, but that group of French tourists remind me of that scene from Passion of the Christ where Jesus is walking and more and more disciples keep appearing. <laughs> I think that's a village up ahead. I think that's where we're gonna be staying. Again, it looks like it's about two kilometers, which means it's about four. What do you see out there? Anything? Clouds, dirt, insanity. It wasn't Passion of the Christ, it was Last Temptation of the Christ, so I need those raucous drums on Peter Gabriel's score, kind of tribal. I think we had our destination, Odia del Camino. Whenever you arrive this time of day, it's during siesta and this feels like a dead ghost town. So this is a little fountain or might not just a little monument right in front of our hotel. We're over there and we're right across from a church. And this is a very old church. Oh, it's amazing. Listen, you can hear the wood floors creak as I walk. You can see it has a lot of Old molding and plaster, still has some water stains. Uh, baptismal for christening, I guess? I'm not sure. Sleepy little town on the Camino. I just walked over here and it looks like the Camino goes out this way. So tomorrow we'll be going out this way, probably early in the morning, if I can help it. Little towns like this make me think about the earliest pilgrims. These towns have been here since then and have taken in so many pilgrims. It just... I wonder why I'm out here sometimes. Am I sincere? Or am I pretending to be sincere? Am I lying even to myself? Am I truly engaged in a holy pilgrimage to discover something about myself? Or am I just another tourist on blend with the trend? <laughs>